Hey everybody and welcome to Rezocast episode 50. It's here, Destiny 2, all the hype in the world. I'm so excited to talk about it, but like I want this to be a short episode too because I want to get back to the game. But I'm I'm here with Hove and I've got Triton here and I've also got the Manigator. This is Lego and we're so excited that you decided to join us. Guys, what do you think of Destiny 2? Uh, I returned it to GameStop. Oh, okay, yeah. You canceled your pre-order, I heard. Yeah, you canceled your pre-order, so. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, and real quick, everyone, we're going to do a non-spoiler podcast just for the beginning of this, and we'll let you know when we get into the story, and when we do that, you can pretty much just skip to the end or stop the podcast so you finish the main story. But yeah, we're going to talk about that later. Right now, we're just going to give you some in general impressions about everything gunplay and stuff like that so uh guys let's hear it how how's the grind been I'm doing i want to go back to it been. yeah <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> man is with me let's make this short but yeah, i don't know how it's going to be 10 minutes <laughs> 10 minutes yeah. yeah no it's been it's it's everything that i think we were hoping it was going to be for sure i'm very very so happy good. with it yeah i mean even stuff that you know we didn't we didn't see coming and it's it's good I, I don't know it's good it's good and what what else do we have to say about it really yeah. like are you guys <laughs> satisfied is it up to your expectations because it's it's there with me it's there absolutely yeah. i think it's better than i thought it was going to be honestly i think so it's almost like a little overwhelming when you jump into like the edz and you're just like shit what are what all these Dude. things what what are doing yeah. mm-hmm. Well, I, I think that's that's a great question, man. And I, I feel like my answer would have to be like, I'm just overwhelmingly impressed. And I don't know if that's because I came from D1 and I know all the problems that I wanted fixed and like almost all of them are solved with this game. And mm-hmm. so I don't know if that's it or if it's because like it just really is a great game, you know? Uh, well, Triton, what, what do you think? Well, Lego, I think that I was going to piggyback off that idea because, you know, Hove kind of started with it, but being better than we expected, there were a lot of things that we thought, can you fix this? Can you do it a little bit better? But not only did they do that, but they just didn't do like, okay, we'll fix and give you what you want. It always was like repackaged or repurposed in a way that was better than I thought we initially would have hoped for. So to me, there was a lot of polish. And instead of just saying like, oh, let's just fix the one or two things you didn't like. It's like, well, we did something with them to make it better. So I thought in that regard, it didn't just meet expectations. They kind of went above and beyond for me. Yeah, I just man, I, can't oh, yeah. believe they killed all the Vanguard and Shax no, <laughs> and the Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone you know is dead. <laughs> JK, yeah, we're not talking about spoilers here. Yeah, but, um, yeah, mana, but, what, what about you? How do you feel like they? Do you feel like they hit it? What do you think? Oh, definitely. I mean... It it looks like Destiny, obviously, but they they tweak something to make it look more vibrant, more like yeah, sharp or something. The graphics, the sound effects are just so good. Oh, so good. And don't even get me started on the music. Literally everywhere you go is just like, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good. It sounds so amazing. I say it all the time. It's just like I'm pretty sure Chad's getting tired of it, and it's only what day two or something. But everywhere <laughs> you go, it's just the music just makes me feel a certain way. It's like maybe it's like um reminiscent of like old Halo, even mm-hmm. like even the last game had good music too. But yes, just, this one they just stepped it up a notch. I didn't even know they could. Yeah, I I dig what you were saying about the graphics, about how everything just has that extra sparkle to it. Because I was just playing yeah, PVP with Hove and the supers just. We were just like messing around with the supers at the end of the game. The game was over, and we did, everybody activated their supers that they had left. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" All the, like the sparks flying out of them and stuff. Actually, it just looks... Lego's exact words were, "Wow, these supers, <laughs> these these supers wow. look magical." And I said, "Yeah, Lego." They like I, I can't really pinpoint what they did. No, it's just like if you're just floating up in orbit, or like the loading screen of um, like when you're coming down, it's just like uh. Yeah, you guys are still giggling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm giggling at Kim in chat, who said, oh, okay. <laughs> who I said Hove's, Hove's camera went defocused for a second, and I said, Hove, LOL, Hove's focused on his cam, and Kim said, Hove is focused on me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, all right, back to the subject, though. But <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> He's like sorry. rocking back and forth, giggling. I'm like, wow, what, what's happening? What did I miss? <laughs> but um, just when you see your ship, I just can't pinpoint what they did, but it looks so much better. 
then in D2 than it does D1. Like they just tweak something just a little bit where it yeah. looks like it, it looks like Destiny, but it just looks better. I'm just like, what did they do? But I don't know. I like it. And mm -hmm. also, like you're saying, like the supers, the explosions, they added more like effects to it and stuff. I don't know. Everything all together is just so much better. Yeah. Do the explosions from the canisters that you shoot, like even just normal explosions that happen in the game, I don't know. It's mm -hmm. like the sound combined with the way it looks. It just feels like an more realistic explosion i don't know yeah i like how now that like if there's something explosive you can shoot it and it will explode like environmental yes. stuff so uh -huh. yeah. and there was that mm -hmm. i noticed PUBG. there's that in destiny in the first one but you never knew exactly what would explode when you shot it like right. is this thing going to explode i'm not sure here it's like obvious you know now i want to be able to shoot the gas cans oh. in PUBG. that's all <laughs> that's all yeah <laughs> But um, let's be honest, when are you going back to PUBG anytime soon? I played last night. Uh, Rally, really? Rally, and Dewey, Rally and Dewey were having that issue where it was telling them they didn't have permission. Oh, and yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, I'll go play weird. with them for a little bit. That makes sense. I'm yeah, just that a really nice guy. TV. <laughs> <laughs> that cockblock TV really hard last yeah, night. Yeah, I it saw was, that. Uh, M-Tash, Hovey and I were supposed to, and TV and I were supposed to jump on. And we waited, like, we, we kept the slot open for, like, three hours waiting for TV, and he just gave Man. up. Man. Yeah, it sucked. That does suck. So uh, I had one other thing. The map design. This oh, is just God. like a generic, like I won't go into details about them, but seriously, I think that might be like over not getting kicked out of my menu anymore. The map design might be my favorite thing <laughs> in the game because it's just so vast. Like everything from the strikes to the st just a simple story mission that you do. It just mm -hmm. like feels so big and so mm -hmm. and there so there's big. one strike in particular <laughs> I won't <laughs> I won't go into it but there's there's one strike in particular that I played with Papa Bear and Lucas earlier and it, it, Lucas was just like dude look down here Papa was like just look look down this area for a second and it was so big and then we kept going to those places that we were looking at instead of you know in D one you'd see something afar and you'd be like ah I can't actually get there and I said to myself like oh, yeah, that's cool, but, you know, we won't go over there. That looks awesome, though. And then you go to all of those places that you saw, and I was like, man, that's really cool. Yeah, thank well, God we for went... fast travel. Yeah, the fast <laughs> oh, yeah, travel right? so cool. Well, I mean, we did that when we went to Titan, and we were kind of, you know, scaling across those, like, you know, broken down, you know, bridges or whatever, and Hope was like, just stop for a second and, like, look at all of the water, because it's like, you know, like... I was just about to say that. You know, all the electric <laughs> and everything. So when you do stop and look at... The scenery and the maps it's super vast but i think they did a really good job with like verticality and then also yes. like variance in spaces so sometimes you are in like a, a tight tunnel or something like that and you come out into those spaces or you mm -hmm. descend or ascend into those spaces so i thought that really you know with that variance definitely added to the scale of the game because it's not just completely open or completely narrow which i felt mm -hmm. some of the levels in destiny one were like that I mean, there's so so much variety, and it usually is one huge space at some point in the in the missions. So yeah. I thought that was a good idea. Going off of verticality, like you said, like um, there's this uh, public event where like a drill comes down and oh. missiles like just fall down around oh, you. Oh yeah. I didn't realize it until just early today, <laughs> but if you look up high enough, you actually see the ship. Oh, yeah, it's wow. huge at you. Yeah, oh. and like I'm pretty sure, it's, like you know, in the D1 where like things just kind of. They, like just appear just and just appeared. like down to you. yeah you can actually see the ships coming down and stuff like that you can actually blow ships up too like it's pretty cool i don't know if that's a spoiler or not no no actually, that's good like in order to start the heroic uh portion of that strike you have to shoot down one of the gunships oh okay and it starts it up that's and cool. like i just things like that i'm just like yo that's so much better you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i think it's like every Almost every complaint or thing we wanted to get bigger or better or change has been changed in that way and things that we didn't mm -hmm. even, you know, think of. You know right. what I mean? Like, everything is yeah. just so much different, but yet it still feels like the same. Like, it still feels like Destiny. Like, it's, you know, it's day two. We're all still kind of in, you know, Super high euphoria. Ah, yeah. yeah, but still, ah. like, it's it's good. It, it mm. is, is very good. Very good. So uh, what I, I gave my favorite thing of like, uh, out of all of it, like what my favorite thing is, like without going into any spoiler, like story stuff, like what has been y'all's favorite thing? You can say like it was a story mission, just not give it away, you know, if that was your favorite thing so far. I'm just curious, is it a mechanic? Is it something to do with the maps, the sound? Um, the For me, it's the integration of the story, like patrols, adventures, all in one space. 
I thought that, I mean, we talked a little bit about how they would do patrols. We talked a little bit about how, you know, you would do missions, but like the fact that you can do all of them in a space that there's a lot of like combined social space, even when you're on a mission, you'll come out to an area and all of a sudden more people can be there. Just like the first mission when we played in the beta, I mm-hmm. thought that integration was way better. I mean, even though the fast travels there, like Hove mentioned, and also you can get to places without having to go to orbit, like that integration to me has already saved, uh, I don't know, probably like an hour if I've played 15 hours, I guess it's probably saved me an hour not having to like go back to orbit, reselect a whole new thing. I thought yeah. that that to me in the long run, you know, like Hope mentioned, it's been two days. We're all hyped up. But I think over the course of time, that will matter. <laughs> I think more oh, yeah. and more. Yeah, that's yeah. probably my, my that's favorite cool. thing. Um, I, I guess the generic answer would just be like the story and how much like all the things that happen, but specifically the fact that I think it's the first time in a Destiny game, expansion, whatever, that, like, I felt like I was doing something epic. Not mm. like the music mm. was epic or they told me I was doing something epic or, you know, the Vault of Glass looked epic, but, like, you were just kind of jumping through it. Like, the last mission or two, like, Triton, you got through to the next yeah, I guess one. I'm at the second to last. Yeah, so. like, that felt like you were doing... Like, just just the music to what you had to do, to the setting, to, like, everything. It felt like you were doing something big. with the And then the cutscenes before and after it with the other half of what was going on. And it just felt like you were doing something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I want to jump back in real quick. Because at that point, I was thinking, like, we've... Like, it matters now. Like, there's weight to what yeah. you're doing. In Destiny 1, there just wasn't... You did all these things, like, you think back, like, I killed Atheon, I killed Crota, I killed Oryx. You did all these things, but it just... You were just this badass guardian. It feels like you're really having to fight for something. And I know we'll get in the story a little bit, but like the amount of sheer enemies always make it seem like you're overwhelmed. It makes you seem like you're having to fight them back. Like from tone to how they actually implemented that, it definitely gives weight to what you're doing. I couldn't agree more. I thought that that was for the story so far my favorite part with yeah. everything yeah. else. Now furthering that, like you're doing all this <laughs> badass stuff. You know, in the first game. You know, the Vanguard or whoever is just giving you missions. You're doing all this badass stuff. You're not really getting recognition in this game. The char- the, like the NPCs that you're talking to, they actually notice you, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. You're, it's like they're there. You're actually interacting with them. Like, um, one, what are they called? Adventures or whatever they're called? The little uh-huh. they, mm-hmm. tiny quest things. They're, um, oh, it was the, the one guy in the church. I forget his name. Oh. Uh, Devram. Devrim. Yeah, Devrim was talking on a comm, and then other characters came into the comm, and yes. they're actually talking about how, like, it's a favorite guardian, you know, yada, 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 you know, telling us to do them. They're having interactions, and they're also mentioning you and stuff, and our ghost, because I guess we're, you know, silent protagonists. Our ghost was jumping in and talking back and forth. I like that. I, I like that you're part of, you know, something. And going back to, like, being a part of it, them being a part of the story, and actually in missions and stuff with us as well is... I guess it's the inclusion of not only us, but also the characters that we've known, the NPCs and stuff. You know, all that is just makes the story better, makes everything just incredibly better. You know, I, I can't really explain, you know, how I want to explain it. <laughs> like, <laughs> just go play the game. Words. It's just way more immersive. And uh, I think immersive. That's, yeah, there we go. Yeah. I like that word. <clears throat> yeah. It's pretty I, awesome. I just, that, like I said, that mission, I remember like stopping and thinking, like, this is so badass. Like, look <laughs> yeah. at what I'm like. I'm gonna do all this myself. Like, fuck you guys. I got. Well, <laughs> you wanna? Do you wanna jump into that? I mean, oh, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I feel We're like right we we could talk about like gun, you know, stuff. But it's like we they feel crispy. Like that looks. Beautiful. I was gonna say like to talking about different exotics count as spoilers too. Because then yeah, pretty much we just gotta go. I mean, kind of so. Yeah. yeah. The only other the only other thing bit. maybe we could cover is just crucible in general. Like what that felt like for you guys. Um, because that that's kind of non spoiler. We kind of know like from the beta, did it feel different to you guys? Particularly from the console beta, do you feel like the changes they made to the PC beta and stuff? carried over and it still felt that good to you guys yeah in a way i feel like um there was a little bit of change so uh, the ps4 beta um it definitely felt like it took way longer to uh, take down guardian than it does well maybe not way longer but like at noticeably. least save off, like yeah, noticeably yeah it, it's like they kind of like took the ps4 beta and they took what d1 was and kind of like molded it kind of like i guess the pc beta Mm-hmm. And they, they tweaked it to where it's a bit faster, but it still takes a bit more at the same time. Not nearly as long. 
And of course, the ability and the super regen and all that you know, from the PC beta all stuck. And it feels it feels really good. It feels uh, much more like fast paced, I guess. Well, I don't know. Maybe not much more, but it does feel more fast paced than the PS4 beta. And that's a good thing, though, in my Absolutely, opinion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we talked, I think, uh, during the console beta, or we talked about it with Hovi, wasn't it? And we were saying how it, it seemed yeah. too. Um, it was like too reliant on team shots and it was going to drive, yeah. it, it could drive yeah. people, solo players mm-hmm. away. And then I think the PC beta really fixed that and I was very excited for it. And it feels closer to that now. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, team shots just by nature, like if two people are shooting you, you're going to die. Yes. You know, but mm-hmm. it still feels like with good positioning and better gun skill, you can win a 1v2, you know, whereas there was yeah. no chance in hell. That's a bigger beta. opportunity to be a lone wolf than in the PS4 beta. Yeah. Like just, just, just not like a high percentage, but you could potentially do that now. You know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's the one thing I was gonna say too. Is I love from because I didn't get to play the PC beta, and so coming from the console beta, it was like it feels pretty significantly different to yeah. me, and in a good way. Like it's like Absolutely. everything for one hit registration was a hundred times better. Like mm-hmm. every game I've had, it didn't feel any, the beta felt like, I don't know, stuff just didn't feel right. You know, sometimes you'd be like, I should have landed that shot. I was right on him. And that hasn't happened to me once yet in actual Crucible. And I played like at least like 10 games or something like that. You know, we played a bit of competitive and, and the uh, casual or quick play, uh, but You're casual. <laughs> I am. Um, the Look. other the other thing was uh, something else about it as well. Oh, the 1v1 stuff. Like, I feel like you can actually use strategy, like Hope was saying, use your abilities in a way that you can 1v2. It's just not, you can't go 1v2 someone in an open area. You have to be smart about it, you know? And so it really rewards you for that, I feel like now. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, I felt like no matter what I did, like, I can't win a 1v2 in the console yeah. beta, you know? It felt like it was just like you try, you turn the corner, you just get melted. Oh, yeah. This yeah. one, like, uh, my only character right now is a warlock, and he has the healing rift or the uh, damage rift. Mm-hmm. So, I've been doing a lot. Was I peek, see what's up, and then I turn the corner, drop the healing rift, and I feel like healing, the healing rift, and just healing in general, uh, is faster just by just a bit, but yeah. it makes all the difference. Yeah, I can actually stand in my healing rift, like hug the corner enough. Take out the first guy while the second one, you know, while barely like dodging the second one and taking both out. <laughs> like, it just it just feels I don't know so much different uh, by yeah. doing that. I tried that in the PS4 beta, and you just get shredded. Yeah, you, know, you just couldn't do that. It wasn't fast. You know, the healing wasn't fast enough. <laughs> yeah, for sure. One of the things I like, uh, I think Lego. I mentioned this to you the other night, um, <clears throat> and this goes PVE and PVP. But as far as like mechanics wise, the class abilities. Like the the rifts and the wall, and I guess to a point, well, not so much the dodge, but uh-huh. they're not so much like emergency valves. It's not like, oh god, I'm gonna die. Let me put down this rift because it takes a second. Like yeah. it has to be a strategic. Like I'm gonna put this wall here. I'm gonna put this rift here. Yeah, you know for what sure. I mean? Because it takes that yeah. probably a full second to get that down. So it's not like you can go, oh shit, I'm about to die, and just put up a wall and be like, hey, hey, haha, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I definitely so, been punished trying to uh so, use my healing rift <laughs> me too. You know, in battle because of that one second you're, you're yep. just open even with the shield since you can jump through the shield even though it like melts your health yeah you, it doesn't kill you so mm-hmm. you can jump through melee and hopefully get away the other uh multiplayer change that they did that i really like was i talked a lot about fusion rifles before obviously i mean but uh (laughs) the changes that they made i felt like were really good it didn't feel like when somebody picked up fusion rifle i was like well we're all dead here if we 1v1 you know i felt like i could defeat people who had them if i played it right and i felt like you had to use a little more strategy and recoil control um correctly in pvp to make it work right and i'm so excited like i'm actually excited for a fusion rifle drop now whereas before i was like i don't know if i'm gonna be that excited for them like they're just so good like everybody's gonna be using them but it was pretty strong variety in the crucible when i was playing it was really fun i like shotguns shotguns are good shotguns are good a kill was really triggering me uh, for a, an hour or so, because he is such an ape. 
He was literally like, he was just like, I just so happened to be here to pick it up, and I just see him rushing in with shotguns. He got, he went on like a twenty-something kill streak just with shotguns. I'm pretty sure, only using oh like gosh. his primary a couple times. And you'd run out and immediately pick up another one. I'm just like, oh my god. So I switched over to a shotgun. And I'm just like, yo, this shotgun that I got right now, even it was just a rare. Actually, no, it wasn't even a rare. I think it was like a green. <laughs> um, I had. I'm like, okay, this thing is pretty strong. So I haven't, I haven't used any legendaries yet. I have a couple legendaries now, but I haven't jumped back into Crucible. It's been PVE grind, but. And I don't know. Shotguns, even though you can get melted pretty easily. Yeah. But they're just good. I don't know what it is. They Maybe are. if you play your cards right, yeah, you can just destroy people. Snipers were pretty fun too, as far as like taking out supers, particularly. There was one match where Hove, I think it was like our second one that we played the first night, the first uh, night. that it dropped. And I thought we were going to lose the game. Like I was like, wow, we're going to lose this game because. It was just me and Hove and two blueberries, I think. And the other team played really good at the beginning and kept capping the flags. And I was like, man, I don't think we're going to win this one. And just we started, me and Hove just kind of turned it around. Like the blueberries were like point something, you know. And we had, <laughs> we had, uh, uh, there was one point where the other team had like two supers go off at once. And I just happened to pick up the sniper and got off like some good shots. And it was just fun to use being that it's an energy weapon, it takes down the supers really fast, even if you get body shots. So it was fun. I don't know. I thought all the power weapons were doing pretty good. Sorry, I was just laughing at mana in stream, actually, or in chat, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I I don't want to necessarily get into weapons so much because now it's going to make me want to talk about specific weapons. Me too. So I'll wait for the spoiler yeah. part of that. Um, so, yeah, but. I had one more PVE thing just in general. Like we talked about, Triton talked about how the story, you know, integrated with some of the um, exploring stuff and how good that was. I was just wanted to point out that strikes are really, really fun now. Like I went strike oh, yeah. grinding with Lucas and Papa Bear and I did it myself the first night a little bit as well too. And they playing by myself was really fun just listening to the story behind it and some of the like narration was just really good and what you were playing was really good. And I was just impressed with like the scope of it and how fun it actually was to play it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll see how it is in the long run, but immediately I'm like, wow, like some of one of them, I was like, if this is, if this is a strike, I can't imagine what the raid's going to be like. Like I felt that way. I was that impressed with it. Yeah. The raid's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Even some of the, like, the mechanics, I guess. In the yeah. Strike. You know, like they strikes. added, they added things here. Wait, what? What was I, it? I haven't done any strikes yet. No, I know. So I I've can't believe done, it. I've only done a handful, and so far I've gotten a new strike every single time. I'm just like, how many are there? You know, <laughs> nice. it's like, what's going, what's going on? Do we know here? how I'm many there playing. are? I have no I idea. I can't remember. I thought there was only like four, but I guess I could be wrong. <laughs> we don't run a Dusty like podcast this. or anything. What? <laughs> I think I've done a new one every single time so far. Yeah, kind there's of a few. And just like the boss design and stuff, I just I won't go into details, but it's awesome. But do y'all want to get into details? Do y'all have anything else to talk yes. about? Okay. Okay, here we go, guys. It's spoiler time. Yes. It's spoiler time. For those for oh, those baby. listening live, for those listening on the podcast, if you haven't played through the story, you probably want to put a pause on it. You know, that that's the main thing. We're gonna talk about weapon specifics and the story just in general, you know uh or not in general but in detail so mm. so what do you did it did the story live up to the hype guys did do y'all feel like gall was was a good enemy you were a good hero i i think the one thing i thought the one thing i thought i think i thought <laughs> you only thought one, <laughs> thought one thing <laughs> when you finished <laughs> um so narrow-minded so the the ending I, so, Triton, I'm so sorry. No, I'm no, gonna, dude. I'm going mean, to start here right now. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> so I thought I thought Gaul was a really compelling villain, and I thought he got a really cool. I mean, we didn't get a detailed backstory, but it was kind of the whole, you know, he was a runt. Someone saved him, so he's kind of been like the underdog, and that's why he like it. Kind of explains why he thinks he wants the light. Like he's come from nothing to do all this, and how he leaves uh -huh. the Red Legion. He deserves it. Yeah. yeah. But then I was thinking during it. Okay, so during this, we're the only guardian with light, right? Yeah, there's some humans running around doing the thing. But, like, all these other times, all these other villains, 
you think all the Guardians were out there fighting them. And yeah, you know, we did the main stuff. We did the raid. We ended up killing the bad guy. But you have, like, the entire force of the city and the Guardians and everything fighting Uh these villains. And this time, it's really just us and some, like, random people with old weapons. So, like, that kind of, to me, I was like, well, is this, are they really that badass that, that, yeah, I know they got into the city and everything, but, like, we're just doing this all on our own, literally. There's no one else out there doing anything. Well, not entirely true, because Gaul doesn't die from us. The Traveler is really what destroys him. Right, but I'm just saying, like, the Cabal, the Red Legion, like, yeah. all of that stuff. You know, we're talking about, oh, yeah. we've been doing all this, and we've led strikes into here, and we're doing this, and all this different stuff that's been going on in other DLCs and everything. You know, there's this big, the Taken of Invaded, and blah, blah, blah. So, but the reason at the end that I kind of, like, am okay with that is because of that post-end-of-the-game scene. Because then you do realize, like, oh, that wasn't it. Like, uh huh. They're just a rogue. Like, it, in all honesty, if you really listen to them, they're just like a rogue. They're doing their own thing. They're not even speaking for the Cabal. Like, they want to take over the Cabal Empire. They think that the Emperor's an idiot. Yeah. So they're like. Is it, they wanted the light to make them, like, superior, pretty much. Yes. They wanted to take uh-huh. the light, become a boss, and be like, look, we're stronger now. Yep. So we're going to take the, you know. Yeah. The whatever. So the it, least. Was, it was just like, you know, it was. It was just one faction of Cabal, like, all right, we're going to go do this, and we're going to take over the Cabal Empire. Now the Cabal, Cabal Empire is coming, like, yeah, fuck all you guys. So mm. that gets me kind of Massive excited. spoiler. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing, though. I feel like uh, the, I feel like my point about the Traveler, like, I feel like that fixes, like, any problem I have with it just being myself. But aside from that, like, I was getting, like, major, major Halo vibes off of the all the missions leading up to that basically especially when you go to destroy um you know the almighty and the mission that i feel like really you were like i'm doing something right now that's when it started to feel like man i'm doing this all by myself right now no one else is helping me like this is crazy you know but it felt like that's how it was when you played halo you were this special person that was going to do all these crazy things and only you could do it and that's kind of what it made me feel like and i was okay with that i'm actually more okay with that that i'm the only one who has a light that explains the story for me and fixes oh, any problems i, I would love have it. With it i just think it it makes it you know the villain clearly isn't as strong if we were able to do it ourselves see I don't, but you didn't do it though like he comes out and says you can't kill me you know at the end and well, we we couldn't but we did. Unless... We killed him. The light saved him. And so the Traveler was like, haha, I'm the light. I can do what I want. Like, we killed Gaul. Yeah. Yeah, I get But it's the same way that you killed Oryx by yourself without your raid team. In the Like, that's what I visualize it as. Like, that's the same. Yeah, but then that was still Oryx just using the rest of his power. See, and I think that was Gaul using the rest of his power. That, that's how well, I see it. The, the thing with, um, like the Taken King and all that, like, uh, the Hive is whenever they die, they actually, their spirits retreat back into, like, their nether spirit world thingy. Uh-huh. And that's what, that whole thing with, like, the Hive, it's weird, I don't know, I was, I was reading, actually looking up a bunch of lore and stuff, so. <laughs> no, it is, it's awesome. And Hove, I, I'm thinking about it more, and I see your point, like, for sure, and I think that what you said about that he was the underdog, really, like, he wants to be bigger, but he's not, like, then whoever else the you know the cabal have running the empire and he needed the light to be that like that makes sense to me i i get like he why he was just a cabal like he uh-huh. wasn't different than anybody else we fought until he got the light yes exactly i'm i'm 100 percent on board with so you i guess that's not even a complaint but then it kind of becomes answered with that post credit scene because you're like oh shit yeah well hey is that i got a question for you guys i'm super stoked about it that i got chills a couple of different times during this game and that was one of them was that after credit mm-hmm. scene and it, i was just like what what is that it looks so much like the concept art that i've seen you know from d1 for some stuff but like what did you think that is cabal or do you think it's something else like i've seen those figures like you said in the d1 concept i yeah. don't remember what it was supposed to be for so it's definitely something that's been there since the beginning but mm. You think that might be the raid, maybe? Like something 
That's what I was thinking. Or yeah. DLC, like big the next hint for the DLC drop. So I was thinking it thinking could be one either. of those two. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. one of those two. But other well, than that, I'm not actually sure what what it's supposed to be. <laughs> don't we have it? Wasn't don't we have a name for that ship? Those ships? There were multiple. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but the one was like bigger, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was a huge. I thought I'll, that I'm was... not sure. I don't know. What was that? I can't remember. It was. That Reddit spoiler you saw a while yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. We know that there's a raid. I never called... saw it. The... I'm asking. I'm trying to ask you a question. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Uh, okay. Was it, it a was big not... ship? No. Oh. I, but it didn't look like that. It's oh. a. It, they have like a world eater, like as potentially what people think the raid is. Um, like you see it in the concept art for loading the Destiny 2 beta. And so, yeah. but it didn't look like the end credit scene. That looked like something different. No, that was, it looked like a cluster of big, well, I'm just, is it okay if I say it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah but just... it, it was, it was a spoiler around, I forgot. It was a cluster of ginormous pyramids. Is yes. what it looked like. Uh huh. And so, and the, the world eater thing looks like a, I don't know, a giant fish eating a planet or something. And <laughs> yeah, so, it was like just a huge mouth, but it was also what... rectangular. Or not rectangle, it was triangular. Yeah, and so that's what we think the raid is at this point, but it we could be wrong. I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're just throwing us curveball for all we know, and they're like, oh, they think they know it? Boom! <laughs> Surprise! This was next DLC's that. raid. We're bringing it in now. No. <laughs> so but, I um, just want to throw out a, a theory there. If it's not the raid, if it's not, you know, the Leviathan we're all thinking of, like, what if it is a hint that Oryx's sisters are coming like it's one of them because during they mentioned the sisters during one of the I don't know if it's an actual story or if it's one of the um, one of the other activities that you do on one of the planets with the hive I'm pretty sure it was on Titan there's a mission that you do there where the entire time the voiceover is like well actually Oryx had yeah we killed Oryx but she has sisters and they control this because they were like who's sending the oh it's the Taken when the Taken first show up, they're like, who's who's controlling these? They're like, well, Oryx has sisters. So I don't know. That's what I feel like it could be because you see the Traveler's Light. Who else would be looking for that kind of power? You know, it could be anyone, really. But that's what my mind first went to with the pyramid design. It just seemed hive You seem Yeah, what, um, in chat, <laughs> hive In chat, they're actually, I didn't realize this, but they, they did just plan out, come out saying, like, the raid is the Leviathan raid. Right. I didn't okay. realize that. Yeah. So that's not a, that's not a spoiler anymore. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think that's a Leviathan. I don't so. think that's a Leviathan. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's maybe, if not this next coming like DLC, maybe like the, the future DLC of some sort. I don't know. It's yeah. a tease of something big. You it's know? a good tease though. I love it. I know. I just don't want it to be a tease for something that's not going to come for three months when we still have new stuff in between, like the raid. Do you know what I mean? See, I think that's cool. I don't, I don't think that's bad. I think that's like, oh wow, there's so much stuff. That's great. Maybe, I, maybe it's an event in between. Maybe it's not like a real DLC. Maybe it's just like we're going to drop this event after like a month or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it could be I anything. I think the the speculation on it, I think, is achieves probably what they want, right? It could be anything, and so we're all still excited until we find out. So I want to yeah. see more theories on on YouTube. Someone needs to get on that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want leaks. I want theories. There, there's yeah, so much yeah. More I don't want leaks. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, well, Hove, you you kind of gave your opinion on Gaul. I just wanted to say real quick that I thought I, at first I didn't. You you know, like when the trailer first dropped from, I was like, I don't know, like if he's gonna be that great of a villain. And they really built him up over this story. Like I have to say, like I feel like I need to give an apology over it. Like it, I feel like they really did a good job encapsulating this this villain and giving him motives get of being an underdog and stuff like that like Triton was saying earlier and and just i i feel like at the end i was like i especially at the very very end after you know you think that you've killed them kind of thing and all that happens it feels like now i really know his motives when he says you see me now you know i was like yes that that makes sense this is what he's all about you know mm -hmm. and i don't know it just really sold the story for me was that moment for him his character in particular oh i thought he was a great villain i just in terms of just raw power level he just they didn't seem mm -hmm. as powerful but power doesn't kind of necessarily like make you a good villain yeah, yeah. good villain underwhelming like just <laughs> that guy yeah <laughs> i guess yeah i kind well, of understand that 
I mean, I went the direction I didn't, I mean, and I haven't done the last story mission. I think, you know, and Ho was saying kind of that, that end credit scene kind of completed what he thought about him and so forth. But to me, I kind of battle between accessibility and like be, being a little cliche. Like, I think, you know, we've seen that story before a little bit, right? And I'm not saying yeah. it's a bad thing. So before I go on, it's not like I'm saying that this is, you shouldn't do this, but the whole, I was cast out, I was the run of the litter, and here I'm I'm coming back to prove prove everybody. I mean, that there has to be a level of accessibility to that, and we all can relate to it. It's in, like, a bunch of stories. It's not it's not new. But I do think they executed it pretty well, so it made sense. I, I mean, not to say you could predict certain things, but not like not that I could predict that he was going to kill, like, I forget that guy's name, whatever his, his scholar's name was. I don't even know his name. Yeah, I, I, maybe he said it one time. Like, whoever that guy was. Yeah. But like when you kind of rise to power and then it's like, well, I was the runt, but now I'm going to like blindly, as Hove mentioned, blindly let my red, red legion get destroyed, blindly let one guardian take me out kind of thing, because now I'm solely focused here. Like I just, sometimes I find it hard to believe that you can get from the run of the litter to there by not just going and taking care of things and that. But again, I think there's, there has to, I mean, in order to be a story that's accessible to people and makes sense within cutscenes and as you're physically playing, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I'm not, there's not a complaint there, um, yeah. but I didn't, I would not say that it's, it's, you know, super original. I didn't find him to be bad or all that great. Trent, I'm, I'm really excited for you to see the last scene with him and the traveler because well, that, for, could, that could matter a lot. Right. For me, I felt the exact same way you did. I was like, I don't know. He's just cliche. You know, like I like these scenes building up to him, but it doesn't really complete it. You know, it doesn't make it seem any different than anything else. And the very last scene with him and the traveler for me like really sells like, Oh, that's what he's about. Okay. I get it now. You know, like it's different. That's what separates him from any other villain. That would be this way. Just for me personally. That's how I felt. And Ripley goes, your Mike. Dang it. Um, No, maybe that makes sense. Maybe that puts it all, all together. I just, you know, like, I don't know when you're the run of the litter and you've had to fight for everything you, you don't even get, according to you guys, you don't even, he's not really at the top. He's just kind of another cabal. And now you're like, um, I'm good. Hopefully that puts it together, but Which as of right now, really kind of makes him. If you really want to look at it like that, he's um, the equivalent of like the Dark Blade, right? Like he was uh, someone who tried to take over the the Empire. Like wasn't that the whole thing? The Dark Blade was in that prison because he tried to overthrow Oryx and lost. Yeah, all the cool. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's not even like the big bad of the Cabal. That's all. Like he's still a good villain. I just he's not super powerful. Is all. Hmm. Um, but the one thing, like Lego was mentioning about the sisters, and they mentioned Oryx, there was, I noticed, a random taken somewhere I saw. And you know how they all have names like Triton, Liar of Lies, like, you know, like that. Um, <laughs> speaker of Lies. His name, it was something, I don't even remember any of it, but it was something, comma, something of Savathun or Savathun or whatever, which was one of Oryx's sisters, right? Sure. Right? I think. Am I right, Lego? Can you nod? I can't remember. Now? Okay. Lego nodded. Shh. I promise he nodded. I think he shrugged. Shut up. He nodded. You're the, you're the teller <laughs> of lies. I think that was the truth. Triton true teller of, of lies. It's literally a visual thing. Hove, master now, of Jack. I think, Continue. I think that was one of, I don't know. Maybe I made that up. But it's somebody. Somebody from the hive that we never heard of. Somebody in chat. Come on. Is that one of his sisters? Her sisters? Their sisters? A sister? A sister. Sister, sister, <laughs> sister, sister. <laughs> I mean, it could be a sister of someone in the game. <laughs> well, while Chad is getting together, I, I would, if that's the angle, that would be terrible if that's what that is. Like, how many times can, like, someone in your family come back for revenge? If we do another storyline like that, I'll be, I'll, I'll still play it, but I don't We're know. We're just going to wipe out all of Oryx's, you know, I know, like, is it like a second aunt coming back at some point after that? <laughs> She'll come back. A cousin three times removed. Yeah. Like, hey! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was so funny just now. <laughs> the that sister, sister comment. I would not be Billy uh, Joe, the grower <laughs> of marijuanas. I would not be that on board for that. I like Triton Teller of Lies. That's that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a question was asked in chat, and they've been debating: uh, Is the speaker alive or dead? Dead. I don't. You think so? Did I they actually so. like? You don't see it. Yeah, they kind of just left it open to your own interpretation. I think at this point, I was actually so, asking this yesterday. I was just like, what, what happened to him? <laughs> Uh, he's actually at the bar with, um, uh, uh, no, the, uh, Pet- not Petrovenge, the queen, Marasov, and her brother, oh, yeah. and the speaker, yeah. they're all at a bar somewhere just hanging out. 
That's there's a good joke there somewhere. Speaker, <laughs> the queen, her brother walk into a bar. So uh, it's the part of the story that I really I'll care about. Like, is the last thing you see of him when he falls out of that thing and the other dude steps on a mask? Is that and he doesn't move? Is that how you're assuming he's dead, or is there another? Yeah, part? yeah, no, okay. that's all you okay. see. What you've seen. Yeah. yeah, that's the end, right? Or else, like, I, I guess believe. it happens right before the end. Yeah, that's like the mission. That was the end of the mission I just played. It could be the end for the speaker. We don't know. We don't know. Um, I I think that what's really interesting is if you've done anything with Ikora Ray after this, uh, she has what the traveler used to have like that in the in the old tower there's like that little like spinny thing that is huge in d1 it's like the traveler's like walk next in to it. it yeah yeah you could like walk in it and it looks like the traveler icora ray has that next to her after you finish and so it's like is she becoming the traveler and everything she says is very self-reflective Speaker, and like you mean or traveler oh speaker my bad it, and so it's like she's becoming the speaker uh the new speaker is what it feels like so i think he's dead for that reason because she kind of takes his place afterwards almost not really but it feels that way question about the speaker hiding. yeah that, that's i mean i it think could be. because they broke his face mask and now he needs to go and find a new one <laughs> is he he's waiting for the halloween season to come around exactly. <laughs> i don't know that i ever paid attention to they even answered this the speaker came with the traveler or is he like someone from Earth who just kind of. He was just the Guardian, I thought, wasn't he? Like he um, self appointed t- type deal? Like, right. Or he was the only person. Was he the only guy to, able to actually speak to the Traveler? Is that why or something like that? Well, I don't know. He even sure. said the Traveler doesn't speak to him. Yeah, right? that was, I was yeah. about to say. Like, it was interesting. Is he relevant because he kind of revealed that, like, yeah, I speak for him, but that doesn't mean the Traveler speaks to him. So it's like he's the one who studied him the most or something. Yeah, it didn't seem like he was all that. Yeah, maybe useful. he's just like super, super smart about things and he's just like, me, me, I'm boss. Well, when he says in chat he was just an Earth civilian, like a religious pastor, I guess that's opposed to a non religious pastor. But um, <laughs> this, I guess. <laughs> so I, I, I'll take Winnie's word for because I honestly don't know, and I never really cared to yeah. think about it because he didn't matter. Let's be completely honest: the speaker didn't matter in Destiny One. Like yeah. he just had power. He had I think he like, kind of like admitted he didn't matter either in Destiny Two, and then he died yeah. in that same scene. So okay, I got a big question for you guys. I, did it matter now that it's out? And we know, did it matter that your guardian didn't speak at all? No. Not really. Not to me. Oh, really? Okay, so for me, the whole time we were leading up to D2, I was like, nah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really bother me. And now that I play it through, it kind of bothers me. Like, I'm really? like, why like, don't, why don't a you little bit. something? Yeah, like, didn't he say a, at least a few lines in the first one? Yes, and then they make a, a joke. Lot. They make a joke about it too. Later, they're like, "Your ghost speaks up and talks for you at, in one of the story missions." Instead of you, you're like about to say something to Cade, and the yeah, ghost yeah, like, yeah. "Actually," <laughs> and you're like, uh, "I mean, I get you're playing a joke on yourself, but that's no." A little... I think it was the opposite. I think you weren't gonna say anything because you don't talk. Because he <laughs> was like, "Tell me that you understand," and you're like, "You like give him a thumbs up or something." He's like, "No, say it," and you start going like this, and the 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 ghost chimes in. That just makes it feel a little stupid, though. I don't know. I don't think mute people are stupid, Lego. Do you? No. (laughs) (laughs) Dang it. Um, I just feel like... No, I I, I don't care. That's all I'm saying. It wasn't a big deal. I just kind of wish that it was there. uh, More than I thought I was going to. But what remedies it again is another after credit scene uh, with the tower. um, And no one says anything. And that was awesome. Like, I thought that was perfect. Everybody just gives each other's looks, and your character doesn't speak, but neither does anybody else, and it's perfect. Like, I was like, okay, I'm good now. That was amazing. Wait, was it the scene where they're just off looking? Like, Yeah. It is, Dude, yeah, okay. I got chills during that scene. I was like, yeah, we did the thing. He knows I did the thing. I did yeah, everyone's the thing. just like, yo, you were there? I remember you. He's like, yeah, I was there. You were there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you over there, too. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was perfect. Uh, something that was just brought up in chat that I figured we did want to talk about at some point. The whole shader economy type thing. Yeah, yeah. We'll get we'll get there. Let let's let's sit on that for one second because we're still talking about like story. We'll get to equipment stuff in, in just a second. The one the one last thing I want to hit was what was y'all's favorite mission that you played as far as just like what did you like about that mission and you know, what was your favorite? 
Mm. Wait, which miss- mission? What was your favorite? Oh. I didn't. I didn't give one. <laughs> you, the, the, almighty, the almighty one for though. sure. <laughs> My favorite may have been the the one where you jump into the huge tanks. Yeah, and that was, yeah, the tank that mission is so tight. <laughs> it really reminded me of like Halo missions, yeah. you know, where you can use vehicles and stuff. And we didn't really have any of that in the first D1. Mm-hmm. And then, like, when that happens, even, like, a, the mission, a couple missions before, you jump into those little mining, mining tank things. And you're just running, plowing through things. I was like, that's sick. You know, I, even that, I was really, like, having fun. Yeah. And then later on, you jump into these huge... What are they called? What are those tanks even called? I don't know. I can't remember either, yeah. But you have, like, just lock on tank. rockets. So yeah, like, you have, like, lock like on rockets. tank or something. I swear it's something that rhymes. <laughs> shank tank, hank tank. Shank. Sp- I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> it's the spank tank. It was so the fun. Spank tank. <laughs> I was just driving I mean, around I in my. my I was just tank. driving around in my spank tank. <laughs> <laughs> firing, locking on, and firing at people. <laughs> I'm with you though, man. That's that's my favorite one, and, and it that's that's saying a lot too because I really like the Almighty mission. That's mm. the one where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like in the movie Sunshine right now. This is crazy, you know. But that was a good I, mission. I thought it was great, but the tank mission was where I was like, this game is awesome. Like it, whenever I was watching the tank like reverse, whenever you start backing up and it makes the back of the tank the front of the tank, I was like, this these mechanics, everything feels so well, and then it's like hold l1 or l2 or whatever to lock onto things and i was like what what this is like titanfall halo and destiny combined it was great it's one of those things that destiny one missed out on you just being unstoppable force you know i mean you're already yes. a kind of unstoppable force but this is just like overkill on overkill you know it's Absolutely. just i i missed that from halo one 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 of the things that happened was uh i jumped in the first tank at first i thought i was only going to be the, like the only guy in the tank. Everyone's uh-huh. like, "Oh no!" Like Gunga <laughs> was like, "Oh come on!" And she ended up dying or doing something stupid that got her killed. And as she was getting revived, I came up on the tank. I didn't even think anything of it. She like revived under my tank as I was driving by and just spat her out like a million miles per an hour and just slammed into a wall. <laughs> I was just like, "What just happened?" <laughs> I came so close to pushing Lego's tank off a cliff. Like so You close. did you did push my tank off the cliff. Well, That's the you, one downside. You got out though. Yeah, I know, but my I was, tank. It, I don't care. They were unlimited tanks. I was trying to push you off the cliff in your tank. <laughs> I realized what was happening right at the last thing. I was like, wait, no, don't and I was like getting out of it, jumping right up as it was hanging off the edge of the cliff. You that was jerk. sad. And then Sam, uh, we we were playing that mission together with a uh, new Rezo member, Sam. And uh, she was, like, trying to get in the tank. And Hove took it first before anybody, just like you did, Mana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then I, she was like, oh, that's okay. You can have the tank. And just all being nice about it and stuff. And Hove was like, no, but you can have your own tank. There's a lot of them. And she was like, no, you can have it. It's okay. It's like, no, there's <laughs> multiple tanks. Well, the best part <laughs> was, you know how they're, like, um, they, you could go up to those, like, spank tank depositories and they like like you could just get a new tank you know what i mean wow home with his rhymes and <laughs> phrases tonight do you know what i'm talking about you could get yeah i don't you, you mean like the tank, tank station but the i don't spank tank. yeah the spank I mean, tank station yeah. right. um where was i going with that oh. i don't i don't you were going <laughs> so then no, i'm not sure when i can we're not, sam, none of us are sure when i convinced sam to, t- to take a tank I just took one and I just sat on top of the thing so it wouldn't let her get a tank. And I would like, it was kind of like, you know, when, when someone tries to get in your car and you drive away a little bit and then when they get up there and you drive away a little bit. Yeah. yeah I yeah. did that to her with like the tank. I would like, <laughs> she'd start like, fine, I don't want a tank. And she'd run like 20 feet. I go, no, I'm sorry. I'm kidding. And I would just drive away. And then as soon as she turned around, I'd back up. And she said that like every time the circle had started, like get a tank. And the, she was holding. Square. No, that was me. That wasn't <laughs> no, her. That was me. Oh, no, whatever. I did something. <laughs> I was trying it was to get awesome. it. You kept backing up. I was like, okay, I, I got it. No, get off my... Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> get off my spank. Never mind. Forget it. Oh, my yeah, God. Don't. don't. <laughs> I need a new spank tank. Let me summon it. <laughs> oh, man. Is there any other story stuff before we move on? Any weapon stuff or anything I else? I think uh, spank tank kind of put the end of the, <laughs> end of the combo. Yeah, I think that's it. No more story after that. <sighs> I like I like the new uh I don't know about all the characters, but I at least like uh what's her name? Uh Hawthorne. Hawthorne. She's pretty Hawthorne's awesome. Cool, yeah. 
Um, and I did like too, Mana, that that activity that you did where uh, it was like that short mission uh, and Zavala tunes in and then Cade tunes in and they keep taking turns like in the way yeah, they all yeah. interact together. That was so good. I just love the back and forth banter between everything. <laughs> Um, speaking of the characters, the one guy, I don't really, Spiffy just said Asher Mir was his favorite character in chat. And while I wasn't really a big fan of him, I did like the fact that he just constantly made fun of Zavala. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, oh, let's go see what Zavala has That to was say. pretty funny. I like that line. Or when he was like, all right, let's go back and talk to Vuvu Zela. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Vuvu Zela. I really wanted on that mission where he's like, I'm gathering all this data to prove that you're wrong. Like, I really wanted him to be wrong. You know, at the end, he's like, oh. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, well, I think each of those like supports on each of the planets like is just like an extension of the characters that they, that are there, right? Uh, so like Zavala's another Titan, failsafe is like that back and forth personality with Cade, and then Asher is like a, good, a yeah. you know Letus Warlock. So I think that helps that it kind of contributes to that those are the people you're helping on the planet. You calling Ikora Letus? How are you doing? I think she kind of <laughs> was. She right? did admit Warlock? that she's never wrong at the end of the game. Oh uh, well, I guess. That's... Yeah, whenever you go see her and she's like talking about everything that happened and she goes, if this was a test from the Traveler, I failed. And she was, I'm not used to being wrong, but I guess I was or something. And I was like, bitch? <laughs> bitch, <laughs> please. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed the mission where Cade was stuck in the teleporter loop thing. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when he, he was like... Uh, you know, he's going on and on about why he's not coming back, and they said that Zavala needed him. He goes, wait, did he say that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you record And then it? later on he mentions it again. And that line isn't very funny, but his delivery of it, the, and did you, by chance? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, just the, the way he says it is so good, and it's, I don't know, it's such, I'm so glad we have Nathan Fillion with us. It's perfect. All of them are good, though. I mean, they are. Lance They're Reddick, all good. Um, what's the girl's name that does, what's her face? Ikora. Is it Gina uh, Torres? Oh. It's oh. the girl from Firefly. I can't, I can't ever remember the actress's name. Which one from Firefly? The girl from Firefly. Not the skin, not the red-haired skinny girl the other one the prostitute what no <laughs> I oh you might be second, talking about like a different the second show. <laughs> the second on deck or whatever like this the lady with uh the yeah, one not, dude. not not yeah. the one with what the mechanic no, i not don't the, remember anyone not the mechanic not the mechanic the other girl the pilot yes the pilot thank okay. you okay i the pilot. know that is Oh, the pilot's wife. Like the pilot's wife. Well, that's who I was, right, that's what I was coming with. Yeah, the, pilot. the escort and the, the. Also, by the way, when I said "is that Gina Torres," we could have just said "yes" because it's Gina Torres. Okay, okay well, good job. She's also said... in the show Suits. If you ever watch that. Okay, I haven't watched that. Oh, and I haven't watched that. Uh, <laughs> real quick, fell safe grew on me too. I thought that she was super stupid in the strike that we played for the beta. I was like, I don't know about this. And now I kind of just enjoy when she's there, even though it's like borderline too much. I'm okay with it. <laughs> I guess I'm like, the only uh, one. I liked all of them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> oh, even though um, you know what my big my big uh, pet peeve going into the game was that I talked about many times, right? Yes, I'm but, glad you were finally proven wrong. I was half proven wrong. Oh, was no, it? you were wrong. I was half Wait. proven wrong. So I was Wait, super was upset that in the homecoming mission for the beta, you're just like, oh, I'm going to come back to the tower. I'm done doing what I'm doing. Oh, it got blown up. Let me pull out this new superpower that I have that nobody knew I had. You know, like the new subclasses. Like, where did you get that? And why do you have it? For homecoming, particularly. Hmm. And they All half, right. yeah. they half explained it. Well, you don't have it, first of all. Yeah, but why is it that when I go to get my light back and I get my light again, all of a sudden it gives me a new subclass and all these things I can do? See, I think that's just just a shard of the yeah, traveler. The I went with it. It's a shard. Yeah, it's one that we didn't get our light from originally, and it's not with the traveler now. So. Oh, so we just happened to find the other two shards. Maybe yes, it called out to us. Off. Maybe it goes along the lines of, like, if the Traveler wanted to, it can give us even more powers. You know, Ooh. there's more powers that could be potentially unlocked. Destiny oh, that's, 3. That's fair, but there was no, like, oh, what is this new thing? It was just kind of like, oh, here's your powers. Oh, yeah, by the way, 
it's completely different than anything you've ever done, but you know how to do it all. Don't worry. Well, you did do that, that quick alert. mission where you just beat the crap out of everybody, ho. So obviously you learned how to do it. No, I don't mean seconds. us as a character. I mean, or us as a person. I mean the character. Yeah. Oh, you I just disagree paper? with you. I think cool. it's explained enough that it's just it's not. not a part I think of the it's the light of the traveler. Just kind of yeah, like yeah, the light just infuses you with knowledge. Kind of just like the Matrix. You just get kind of get plugged in. <laughs> you can just yep. upload. Yep. You know, exactly. Exactly. The light of the traveler just like zoop zoop zoop. Oh, now I know what to do. You know. <laughs> I like Manus theory too. That potentially the traveler chose not to uh, give it to you yet because Ikora or somebody at the end has a line that's like. Maybe the traveler chose not to do anything this whole time on purpose or something like that. Somebody says that when you walk up to them when it's all over. And that makes me think of Mana's like theory that maybe he just wanted to choose to get he was holding he could give us more power at some point. He just hasn't. Yeah. I think he was just napping. He was tired. <laughs> it was recharging. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. It could be recharging. I mean, there's maybe been like times sun, you know, solar powered. There's definitely been times that I've slept so long that people just thought I was dead. So why couldn't the traveler do that? Yeah, same. Norse Crow slept for 16 hours after I played with him uh, <laughs> after midnight release. Oh my god! <laughs> he came back into my next stream. He's like, "Well, I slept for 16 hours." I was like, "Wow, you were actually dead to the world." <laughs> okay, so weapons and other things that and shaders and the way that all of the daily things that we're gonna be doing work. Yes. What, let, let's address the shader thing first, I guess, since that's a big topic amongst everyone right now. You have to individually put shaders on everything now. And uh, was it who who is the one who put out the tweet about it from the TWAB today, too? Um, Luke Smith tweeted. Uh, Luke Smith, about Luke Smith it. did, yeah. yeah. So Luke Smith tweeted about it uh, earlier today or yesterday about just basically explaining, like, hey, we want it to be this way. Uh, that's basically all I said. <laughs> Um, what do, what do you guys think about the whole shader dilemma here? I like Honestly, it. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah, not I, a big deal. I, I kind of like fine. it too because I feel like that creates more customization. Yep. You know, you can have nice little co color combos. That's true. I, I can see what people are going with. You know, say if you run out, you use a shader on a couple weapons or something, but you also want to pimp out your dude in the same color, and now you ran out. You know, you're like, well, crap. Now mm. I got weird color combination. I can see where that's coming from, but. On the other hand, it's just like now you can just mix and match, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm eating. Okay. Mana's yeah. cam didn't work tonight. <laughs> I may or may not be eating a Dude, couple that double, Are you getting that double, double stacking ginger bacon, though, Mana? No, mm. no, no, no. Um, hey, actually, a hey, healthy today, okay? Add, add veggies, add chicken and stuff. I had to make up for the past couple meals which is all pizza and wings <laughs> <Mountain Dew. laughs> sounds so good um so i'm with you hope like I, it doesn't really bother me and i had and i hadn't thought of mana's thing about like you know it actually adds customization that you couldn't do before oh, and so that i think that's pretty cool um the one thing that i kind of wish was a thing but i don't know how it would work now that i'm thinking about it is some way to get it back if you apply it to something and then later decide you don't like it. Maybe if you dismantled that item, even though you really like that item, but you wanted the shader back, just if you dismantled it while that shader was on it, you get that shader back or something like that. I kind of wish was there, but it's not. I don't know. Huge. Man, if, I, if I paint my shoes and then I throw my shoes away, I don't get the paint back. <laughs> you wow. have a point, but this is <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> but this is space I, I um, guess yeah, but you get so, I have so many shaders already like so Ooh. many yeah I do have a lot and Luke I, Smith I'm curious in his how tweet even said that after you complete like the campaign they will start to drop much more frequently yeah mm -hmm. so I, I don't know I don't see and a problem with it a, a yeah. lot of people like it because it's a reason to grind too. It's like you can go to the raid more now for this stuff. We'll give you your weapon that you want right away. And here's the customization stuff if you really want it, which will get me going back into the raid if there's a shader I really like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I like it. Plus, you can apply them to, you know, across your weapons, your ships, your ghosts, your armor. It's not just your armor. Yeah, it's just everything, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Practically every piece you have, yeah, can um, 
something can be applied to it and not just like colors too there's mods right like yeah. um yeah how about that okay so one thing i have a million mod pieces now but i can't really use any of them on i can only use like uh what are they called um like arc solar and all those i can only use those on my weapons right now yeah how do i like is it the same with you guys or can you actually use your actual i have a million mods? armor ones and yeah same no weapon ones i don't actually understand maybe it's a glitch or something that they need to work out but i can't use the majority of my mods huh. on my weapons and armor and stuff like that i don't know I don't, Wait, maybe just those weapons armor? um yeah. oh maybe armor but weapon weapon wise is just only changing those um elements yeah, Those are that's the only, the things only ones I'm I have, because all the other ones are like, um, for instance, remember how we used to try to get hand cannon reload gloves? Mm -hmm. mm. Now there's a mod for your gauntlets that increases the reload speed of all your primary weapons, but it goes on your gauntlet. Like, it took okay. me a minute, too. Oh, okay. So those go they on They go armor. on specific things. Oh, okay. Yes, they go on your armor. Yeah. And Wendler's your saying weapons. weapons are oh, only okay. elements. Weapon. Well, Wendler knows everything. At this time. Well, on it. <laughs> okay, no, that's fair. That's all I've seen. That's what was confusing me. Yeah. Yeah, no, Smithy's had... saying there's attack mods from the gunsmith later. You have to upgrade those. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah, so for me, I feel like I just haven't even touched the mods because I'm like, I want to yeah. wait until I, I have... get everything and then, or, you know, or I'm about to go in the raid and need to. I'm something yeah. to armor me. so often for light. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's the same thing. I'm, I'm actually afraid to use my mods just because I think i'll just toss it like immediately yeah Go i think in, any kind of crafting something. rpg thing that's like that's it's a fatal feat. mistake yeah to do early maybe it's more like yeah end game stuff when once you start getting good armor pieces then you're mm. like okay i'm going to stick with this one now for i know for a while so let's put something on it i know yeah <clears throat> I'll tell you what's really cool is the whole new system with not having to put on all your really crazy good stuff like in the crucible in particular like you kind of have to in pve because you want your to be a high light level to do the stuff you need to do more power you know but in the crucible the power doesn't matter and so you can equip just what you want and as long as the you know the destiny 2 knows what your highest light level is and so it'll just give you super high light level gear still even though your gear you are wearing at that exact moment isn't high and so that's helped me out like I, I can't get mm -hmm. out of the mindset of still putting on the highest light level gear. I was like, Same. oh, I can use this fusion rifle I want to. It doesn't hurt me to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. I love that. I keep on forgetting that's a system too. Like every time I go back to the tower or something and I have uh, a couple engrams, I'm like, okay, I'm going to equip. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, wait, wait. Oh, I don't have to do that. Nice. <laughs> it's so nice. I love it. Um, as far as systems, before we get into, well, forget it. We'll talk about weapons first. I have one complaint. But it's not a big deal. But we'll talk about weapons first. Okay. Since, since we're on shaders and weapons and stuff. Yeah. So have y'all gotten any weapons that you like really love? Any exotic that you're like, oh yeah, this is great. Um, I got this legendary auto rifle. It's in the, um, the secondary. What what is it called? Um, energy. Element. Oh, energy. 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 There we go. It's weird. <laughs> they switch everything up. I can't remember what's oh, on there. Energy secondary. But um. <laughs> energy weapon slot it's an auto rifle it's actually the same one of the auto rifles from the beta but it's called something different i can't remember what it's called it is so nice in That's both awesome. pve and pvp and i just have it on me at all times and i i want to infuse it but i never have like since it's so early i don't want to get rid of my like legendaries and stuff like that so i have like no legendary shards so it's like really low light level it just drives me crazy because I'm getting all these rares that are better in light, you know. Yeah. Actually, that's one of my that's one of my um little complaints is there's so many blues that are just so much better than my <laughs> than my legendaries right now. It just drive me crazy. Yeah. It's it called, is um, I can't. Man, I can't remember what it's called. Which one? I guess that's it for makes sense. What was it again? An <laughs> it's rifle? an energy auto rifle. Energy, yeah, energy auto legendary energy auto rifle. It's it was from the beta. Huh. Uh, it's not like the Skate Lock or the... Not that one. It's the other one. Yeah. Uh, death, no, uh, death, death something. It was Death something. Death Stalker or something? Yeah, like? I think. It was that one from the beta. Okay, cool. Yeah, I liked both of the auto rifles in the beta, so that's awesome. 
it's almost uh-huh. like a much better SMG because I don't think it was it had a lot of range, but it was just yeah. melted. It was super accurate. Dude, I can't wait to get some more legendary drops. Right, I only have a few. I'm only like two. What am I like? Two forty light somewhere. Two forty, two fifty something in there. And I have one legendary auto rifle, but I love it because I got a Titan chest piece. You get a choice of getting this one at some point, but it's one that automatically like refills your auto rifle as you're shooting it. Kind mm. of like the effect that from that gun in the beta, but. Or if you use a barrier, you know how you can refill like your ammo. It kind of just does that automatically mm-hmm. as you're shooting it. And so my auto rifle also has this rampage perk on it that will, uh, like, basically it's like what's the kill in D1 or the perk in D1 where you kill someone, reload, and it gives you extra damage. It's like that reactive reload, reactive reload. But instead, it happens as soon as you get a kill, it activates and it doubles. Like it it can stack up to three times and your damage just gets higher and higher as you keep shooting. Yeah, it's like kill clip. It's like that, but that's not what it's called. Rampage. Mm. Maybe it's, I don't know, but it's awesome. So I've been using that gun and I like it a lot, especially combined with some of the other stuff. I'm pretty sure I have my, my raid scout rifle ready to go. I got just today, a little bit ago, I got the um, sky burners oath which is like a slow firing high impact scout but it mm. kind of has focus fire on it if you're hip firing it's faster which almost makes it like kind of usable up close um when you aim down sights it shoots it says it shoots solar slugs that are more powerful when aiming down sights and it also does extra damage to a ball and shoots through phalanx shields oh, that's pretty nice. cool my god what is a legendary or exotic no, it's an exotic it's an exotic yeah oh nice so I only have a couple of exotics. I think that's my only exotic weapon. Besides like I the have, cold um, heart. Oh no, yeah, the I got cold the cold heart, heart and the one you I get got to the, pick. Um, the one you get the yeah, yeah, you get the pick of the sure shot, the and whatever the other ones are. The I got the pulse gun. rifle. So did I. And honestly, I was very disappointed in the, the pulse if you guys really? got you it. Didn't like it? I don't I don't like it. I don't know. It feels really underwhelming. At least to me. Hmm. And I got the Borealis exotic sniper rifle. And that Ooh, thing is fun. Mm. Not only is it good, it's so convenient for PvE because you hold square and you change uh, elements. Oh! You change through all three elements whenever you want to, and you don't lose ammo. Hmm. It is really good for PvE. Wow, is that's it really good? like—is it a good sniper? Yeah, it's a high impact, um, like mid zoom type deal. It feels just like the black spindle, pretty much. Okay. okay. And I was actually, that was my only sniper right now that I'm able to use effectively in PvP. And, like, I'm actually able to hit <laughs> it. I just got my first legendary one, like, right before I quit playing it. I think it was the same one from the beta. Was it, like, the Copperhead or something? Yeah, uh, that's it. I just it. got that one. Actually, now that I think of it, I don't think I have a legendary sniper. That's I like the, I only have the exotic one. <laughs> I just got the Darcy exotic one. And it's really interesting, but I don't understand, like, why it's exotic yet. Maybe I just need to play around with it more. But it, like, highlights enemies and gives you information. But, I mean, I it, like, tells you. And we were, like, speculating, like, what does that even do? Like, for PvE, I don't know, because you can see their health anyway. And for mm-hmm. PvP, if I can, if I look at them, I just want to take the shot. I don't need any information, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I got a couple, I think it was the only, well, here's my, my question. I asked you this yesterday, Lego. Um, so far, you know, it's early, but favorite, favorite weapon type, go. Oh, submachine gun. It's so much fun. I love it. I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't actually really like the auto rifles that I've, I've found. I mean, maybe that's just because I keep getting good blue auto rifles, but so far I've enjoyed them more than the other things. They are fun in PvP, though. I think that's the same for me. I keep on getting good feeling auto rifles, and auto rifles feel really good. Like the majority of the ones I use too. Mm-hmm. Um, I, still... I just now started using SMGs. Uh, the few I started off with, it felt so hard to use, and I got this one. Oh, what was the, like the Philippus or something like that, like B or something like that. It phosphorus. No, no, it was it was almost like a name. It was almost like a play on a name, oh. like Philip or something. I can't remember. But um, this thing might be the best SMG I've used so far, and it's a rare. It has a perk on it to where it's more accurate the longer you shoot. It's one of those things, and it okay. has more range at the same time. 
Oh, and nice. Both of those put together on an SMG oh, is SMG, actually yeah. really freaky, yeah, yeah. Good, you know? Yeah, I found... I, I was mean, just shredding people in PvP. They did a much better job of making things good in their intended ranges, I feel like. And SMGs mm-hmm. have a very steep, like, okay, they're good. Okay, they're terrible. Like, they're yeah. good up close. I use it mostly, like, even in PvP, if I use it as, like, my up close one, like maybe yeah. a scout in a, in a SMG, you can, like, get up pretty close, hip fire, and then, like, melee. You know, and, and in mm-hmm. PvE specifically, they do enough damage, especially with how big the Cabal are when yeah. it's a lot of the people you're fighting. You can just roll up to them, hip fire some of those guys, and they do good damage. If you do happen For to get sure. headshots, it absolutely melts people. Yes, I totally agree. And what's really fun with that, which I just started doing, is tr- treating it like sweet business on a Titan where you put that short barricade down that automatically reloads your gun. And with the shove machine gun, if there's a bunch of people right in front of you, you just pop up duh, 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 and you never stop holding down the trigger. It's How awesome. How does it go? <laughs> <laughs> um, Spiffy in chat said swords are amazing too, which they are. I like swords. Swords That's are fun. The one thing I'm not super impressed with is I I didn't so feel like cool. it felt great. They did a lot of damage. I just I missed doing the three hit, and mine were only doing two. Maybe I need a legendary one or something. I only got a green one, so yeah, exactly. Green green sword? Sword? That's I, a thing. I have three legendary swords. Yeah, I got a green. Yeah, sword. I have really? three legendary Gosh. swords. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I didn't even know there was like lower tier swords. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought you had to be like you had to have legendary in order to get it, but uh, I like how there's so many different types now. It was, uh, I think it was Lightbreaker I was playing with yesterday. He had like a straight up katana looking thing. Yeah. And I when got... he was running, That's cool. he did like a little like anime like run thing where like his sword's back and he's like, he actually made him run oh, quicker, nice. like forward. I was just like, That's so what? Cool. He That's was awesome. actually keeping up with me when I was on um, a pike. I was like, oh. What is this? <laughs> like he was just like, just a few steps behind me whenever I was cruising around. I was like, What is this? But it, that and I have, um, I have three different swords. They kind of all look alike, unfortunately, but yeah. they're all different. Um, but, oh, what was I going to say? I just lost track. Crap. Well, the sword sounds awesome, especially the different movement that you have with them. Or I wonder if some of them, like, up your agility or anything like that. Because they were saying, the bungee devs, whenever they were talking about agility, and if you want to go really fast, equipping a weapon that has some lightweight capability to it, like, really helps your agility and so I'm wondering if some of the swords maybe do that. Oh, really? I never even knew that. Oh, one of my swords is um, you can tank your damage. But in turn, it gives you a ton of ammo. What? I'm just like, maybe? Like, you know, maybe for lower tier enemies, that might be fun, you know, because yeah. like uh, with your power weapon, you don't have a lot of ammo, right? right. So you kind of want to use it on stronger guys but if you just have like a ton of i haven't really used it properly yet but uh i'm just like yo that might actually be really fun but gunga and i actually did a uh strike today almost 100 percent on swords <laughs> and awesome. we found out you know how like when you run out of ammo you kind of had the ice cream cone but in this one they kind of become like, like see-through sword yeah yeah it's like a phantom sword or something it actually does quite a bit of damage still you just swing super slow yeah. but it's really effective still. I was like, okay, it's interesting. That's cool. I'm trying to think if I had anything else that's also, oh, fusion rifles. Okay, spoiler on the fusion rifle front. There is a fusion rifle that looks exactly like the Thesan, and I'm so excited. It's max impact, oh, yeah. super high range, and Lucas had it drop for him, and I was like, what? What is this? It looks exactly like a Thesan. And Wilson was showing me there's one that also looks exactly like uh, what's the the one before Thesan? It's Amalon too, but it looks all sleek from D1. Uh, mm-hmm. The Vanity. Uh, or that's the hand cannon, isn't the it? Vacancy. Vacancy, yeah. Um, there's one that looks exactly like that too. And they look awesome. I can't. They're both max impact. But the exotic one sounds really cool. I saw Imtash had a video out that was like, this is the best DPS gun in Destiny, and I don't know. It looks it looks fun. I, yeah, I haven't I don't have it. But super hyped about it. Looks awesome. He also has uh, exotic boots. Actually, we both have exotic boots where Me. if you step in it, it automatically reloads whatever weapon you have. 
So he was super hyped. Like, I'm in DMs with him, you know, him, TV, and uh, Hovey. He was going on about He's like, yo, this is going to be the best thing ever for the raid. You know, he's like, I got this fusion rifle that's super OP, that fires super quick. Like, the more you hit something, and like, I got these boots. I'm just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. He was just stoked. <clears throat> Dude, you know what's really weird? I, I feel like I've been grinding D2 so much that I, like, peered away from my screen for a second and i can only man his icon is just an icon today and so i thought that that little blue dot was an ingram for a second like i i'm just like in that mode <laughs> that's ridiculous <Rare. laughs> wait, wait there's an ingram on the we gotta stop the podcast guys i got an ingram we gotta go back oh, i'm tired i haven't been sleeping because i've been playing too much d2 <laughs> i know same actually even though i want to i don't think i'm gonna jump back on tonight oh, just I because i need to sleep call. i Probably absolutely call. am I'm going to jump in. <laughs> like, oh, you're no, making no, a good no, call, no, man, no. and we're just going to be the unwise ones. I know. Actually, no. Try to fix my sleep schedule, maybe. I'm just disappointed in you, man. I'm not even mad. I'm just you're disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> Staring at me. He can't see me. <laughs> I can see him. Oh. He's me. Okay, so did, did y'all have any other weapons or any other thing that... Hove, I know you're upset about something. What it, What is this? I mean, are well, we, yeah. are we done with something. that stuff? It, like sure. Weapons armor. Okay. I mean, we can come back to it. If it you was want. just, it's just a small thing. But you remember last week we talked about how it was cool that like there's a, an activity for whatever number of people you have. Yes. Threes, fours, sixes, you know, six for a raid, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. The one thing, especially between um, PV and PVP is the whole three to four thing. It is I driving don't me crazy. Like, not driving me crazy. It hasn't really affected us like anybody I've played with yet, but we were talking about it. Say you're doing PvP. Say the four of us are like, hey, we're going to go do PvP. And then we're like, all right, well, we did what we wanted to do in PvP. Do you want to go run some strikes? Well, who do we boot? Mm. Yeah, or yeah. there's three of us running and we want to go do PvP. Yeah, you can do it, but maybe you wanted to go in. You're going to go in one less than a full team. Like, you have to go find one person who's by themselves, maybe. It's just an odd, like, st uh, switch. Yeah, I I, 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 I wish about, we yeah. could go in patrol like in fours or something like that because I felt that need to like it's not like super bothersome yet, but it I did feel that whenever we, I didn't respond to you for a second and you jumped in with Lucas and Papa and were like, hey, uh, and I was like, oh, hey, I can join. And you're like, oh, we got three. We could go do Crucible, but we're doing strikes and it's like, I don't know, you know. Yeah, and I mean there was that same type of thing, you know, if you had four yeah. before you could go into P you could go into six as PvP as opposed to PvE, but it's just a the fact that there is that diversity also kind of throws things off because it's not like there's threes and everything, there's fours and everything, and there's sixes and everything. It's uh -huh. like you just need to have that people. four player co op already. Come yeah. on now. So, mm. Make another class already. Right. <laughs> you can do it, I believe in you. So not wow. a big deal, but just just kind of awkward, especially if you're going from PvP to PvE, because then you have to like mm -hmm. awkwardly boot someone. I mean, I know in this group, it would be an easy answer. We would just kick Triton out. But... I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Triton's just giving us death stares. Hmm? Oh no! I mean, I thought he was going to go oh. with that way <laughs> earlier. I think <laughs> the end of that, that just to to mention that is a waste. So uh, here's my... a little complaint. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm going to I was going to go with the complaints as well. Go ahead, man. Oh, well, my one real complaint is that they still haven't alphabetized the friends list. Like it's not in alphabetical oh, order. No. <laughs> and now that the friend or the clan thing ain't working, it's just like where are you? Like so and so I can't oh, find people on there. Me nuts. Yeah, same, same. I was okay. trying to look for me Lightbreaker. Yeah. And I was like, I cannot find you. There's so many friends. It I think there's so many friends that a lot of them don't appear on those pages. Like, you yeah. know. Yeah. I went through, like, I was trying to play with Sam and Wilson, and I, like, I looked through, and I'm known for just browsing over people, but Wilson put on this bright pink emblem that he just got that nobody else had. And I, like, just went, like, name by name. And neither of them showed up on my friends list. They were both mm -hmm. online. Like, I could see them on the PlayStation friends list. They weren't appearing offline or anything. And I was playing with them. Um, but they didn't show up on there. It was weird. Hmm. So that seems buggy. And also, in the beta, you are able to hit, was it L1 or, or, I mean, R1 or R2 to go do the next thing. Like, in D1, you are able to go back and forth using your bumpers or whatever, or triggers. And this one you can't do any of that. And I'm just like, but in the beta you're able to go forward. I'm like, what happened? You, it's uh, it's your D-pad now. 
Is oh. it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I didn't know that either. Nice. Wow. Okay, Trip. I need to make this known. You're <laughs> Tweet Thank it. Thank you. Tweet it. <laughs> Tweet it. <laughs> I need to go and test it out. I need to confirm. Now you can't at all. Ooh, Wenny. So you don't know everything. Boom. Sister, sister. <laughs> right, what's your complaint? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I think we stumbled across it, and we actually talked about it the first day we played. Was when you are the fire team leader and you track something that the other two people can't see that. Um, they can't see that at all, like where wherever you're going. So we have to rely oh, on yeah, you know, I agree. going to the same place. And not that that's like a big deal, big deal, but that was something that usually continually annoyed me in the division with not being, you know, the other person not being able to see that. Like, what if? If you don't want to have to follow that person for a minute or you go off the trail, I mean, finding them back. It just seems like that would have been easy to do. And I don't know as a coder, but it's not a major thing. But it could be like one of those economy of life. Like in a couple months, you're like, oh, my gosh, I still can't track anything. So hopefully yeah. that's maybe an update. But I wonder if the reason they did that is just to like say you need to go start the mission. And so you click on it to go over there. But then this person needs to turn something in a Devrim K or whatever and he goes over there and marks him. So they're marked different things, but they both accomplish something at the same time because they're in the same group. I, I, maybe that's what they were thinking. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I could go, I could be behind like you. If you're the fire team leader, you're the only one who could mark something, but everyone else should be able to see what you mark. If that's what mm. you mean, like instead of having like, you know, yeah. that way everyone can't just keep overriding the mark system or the track system. I get that. Also, another little thing when you bring up your map, you can't see where your teammates are. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. yeah, that's a little thing because I was um trying to uh, tell someone I can't remember if it was yesterday or today where I was just like, yeah, I'm over here uh, <laughs> doing this thing, and they're like, don't necessarily know where that is. Uh, where are you at? I'm like, don't you see me? I'm like, he's like, no. I'm like, oh, we can't see each other. Yeah, okay, especially if you leave if you leave the section of the map that you're in, then you can't. You don't even see their icon. You don't know yep. anything. Oh, okay. That that's what happened. Like I left first. Mm -hmm. And I was, instead of telling them the name of where to go, I was like, don't you see me? I'm right here, you know, coming over, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <clears throat> or even, like, kind of like a hybrid thing. Like, maybe only the fire team leader can track, you know, a mission or whatever, but everybody should be able to put, like, a waypoint. Like, man, you play PUBG. Everyone gets a different colored waypoint to put down. Yeah, yeah. That would also be nice. Um, One of my main complaints is... The, and this is so funny. All these complaints are so tiny, I feel like, in comparison to what I would normally have a complaint for a game about. But my complaint is that I can't infuse just, you know, a power weapon into a power weapon. It has to be a fusion rifle into a fusion rifle. And that drives me crazy. I know, like, maybe it's better for the end game. You know, we'll see later on. And so it's really? not even really a complaint. It's just something that I'm frustrated with right now because I... I have, like, for example, I got the Sunshot hand cannon, and it was so much fun in PvE, blowing stuff up and making them explode, and it just reloads really fast and everything. And I was having so much fun with that gun in particular. And then I went to upgrade it because I was like, oh, I have this energy weapon. I want to use this right now. You know, this would be fun. And then I went, I had, I had just deleted all my rare stuff that all my rare hand cannons that were higher light level. And I didn't realize oh, it has to be a hand cannon. It can't just be this SMG that I just got that super highlight level. So, I honestly never knew that you have to have the same type of weapon to infuse. Yes, so watch out for that. Mm. <laughs> but I don't know how I feel about it. Well, my thought on it, um, one, at least you can do it across weapon types. Like, not weapon types, but um, slots. Like, if you have a kinetic scout rifle and you want to yeah. use an energy scout rifle, so that at least opens it up a little bit. That's a little nice, yeah. Yeah. My thoughts are one. oh hold on i just realized something that could help you increase your light level if you're struggling with a primary like it's like say your primary is like 220 but the rest of your stuff's at 240 and you have like a an energy weapon that is an auto rifle that if it's anything really you could infuse your primary into the energy weapon that is also an auto rifle and give your primary way higher light than it had. I never thought about that. That that's cool. Sorry, blew my mind. I know. I just blew, hope just blew my mind. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I, so what I was saying, I don't remember. 
Um, <laughs> sister, sister. Sister, sister. It was a That's really right. good show. Tia and Tamara. Triton, the um, teller of lies. <laughs> but anyway, Wasn't it the liar that, of lies? Well, it was, and then I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, I don't know if it made sense to be good. I just think the liar of lies is better. I think this you're just a liar, preference. so it doesn't matter. Um, but no, as far as the whole infusing thing, like, I get it as far as, like, logically. Like, hey, I have this stronger hand cannon, so I'm going to put it into this weaker hand cannon. Like, you know, because really the what's of primary versus a special versus a heavy in D1 was really just kind of arbitrary. Like the game just decided it. There was nothing like similar about hand cannons and auto rifles as opposed to hand cannons and sniper rifles. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. mm-hmm. when you look at it logically, I know it's a video game. There's space yeah, magic, it, but you like, you can't like paint your shoe and throw it away and get your paint back. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, on the other side of it though, I think it's kind of a, especially with the fact that, yeah, we have mods and everything, but there's no, there's set roles on the guns. Don't you think it's also kind of an artificial way to increase, like, what you need to grind, too? (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm laughing at Triton in the comments (laughs) telling all these lies. (laughs) The teller of lies. (laughs) Um, But... (laughs) We need it in the podcast oh soon. This is, this is getting out of control. Oh. I took. I also took Triton's mod sword. That's what he's yelling about in chat. Um, but no, seriously, don't you think that's? It's kind of like an artificial way to increase the time that you need to grind. Yes, it's a little artificial, but it also helps it with what you just told me a second ago. So right. I don't know. Like that's what I mean. This is something that's not really a complaint. It's just something I'm going to have to sit on for a little the while. The Manigator, the taker of swords. I think Manigator, eater of gators, might work eater even better. Eater of gators. <laughs> oh, the Manigator. Oh. Okay, and for real though, do we do we have do we have know. anything else? I, I, I like know. your point, Hove. I'm just not sure if it's uh this is just something we're just gonna have to sit on for a little while and see like if it's mm. better or worse if we like it in the long run. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> we've all been playing way too much Destiny too. This is the best fiftieth episode I could have ever oh, we asked. We never even for. like mentioned that. For this is our fiftieth episode, by the way. Yeah, no, it was great. Destiny two came out, number fifty. We have the Manigator now. It's it's just great. Life is good. <laughs> we have. I'm sorry. Can you refer to him by his full name, please? I said the Manigator. Taker the Manigator, of taker of swords. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, this has been Razocast episode fifty. Well, wait. What about community stuff? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can you can go. We can go through a little bit of community stuff, but we do need to. No, to we, yeah, we will end it soon. Okay, because we're we're not gonna be able to to communicate properly soon. <laughs> so quickly, we're just gonna go through. Uh, Triton of all people posted. There was no question this week because there were or like questions because we didn't have a guest. And no uh, facts, clearly. Yeah, we don't know what we're talking about. Uh, also, I'm trying to not pay attention to the last couple things said in chat because <laughs> that would just get us way off track. Um. <laughs> Triton posted, as we get ready for our 50th episode one day after Destiny launches, which is today, what is something you learned about each host over the last year? Um, so there were a couple cool ones. Uh, Monk says, Lego is happiest while vooping. True. Triton is overcommitted on Thursday nights. True. Look, he can't even commit to paying attention. <laughs> I'm paying attention. I mean, and I read all the comments. Hove has intimacy issues that make it hard for him to talk about the beautiful thing that he and Triton have together. Uh, yeah, no, that's not true. He's the liar. Of, he's All the true. liar of lies. The speaker of lies. <laughs> um, Yam says Lego gives top tier hugs. Thank you, Yam. I appreciate um, that. Taz says Manigator is the best eye candy, and it's fun distracting Hove with lewd comments in chat. <laughs> <laughs> which, it, is, which is happening which tonight. just literally just happened mm-hmm. um also i just want to point out even though it was really funny that mana called himself that i took your sword triton don't ever forget it i know you did uh-huh. 
<laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um, Botbuster says Triton live lives in Hove's basement. Fact, just stating facts. That's great. Um, I mean, there's a lot in here about some fantasy that Triton has. About <laughs> I never comment on it. I don't know what you're talking about. I saw something about like Mindy. Yeah, there's there. all kinds of one about Mindy. Sure Triton's my home. slave. He lives in the basement. He snuggles me while I sleep. There's a bunch of weird. Yeah, three of those four are true. I, I saw um, one of them said the manigator eats gators. That's what made me think of that comment earlier. Oh, yeah, one of them did say the manigator eats gators. Who who was that? That was great. Uh, I'm I mean, looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Bro, I, I have now. So, <laughs> and he has. It's true. These are all factual statements. I was peer pressured. <laughs> uh, one of my favorites though is Asriel speaks says Triton snuggles Hove while he sleeps. I don't like that part. Lego is gigging around the U.S. and Mana is more consistent with Resocast than his own stream. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that one hurts. <laughs> um, an actual one. JLH, good friend of 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 all of ours and the podcast, said, uh, "I've learned at the end of the day, they're a great and talented group of guys. It's been a pleasure watching Reso- Resocast grow. Cheers to you guys." See, cheers. We cheers. have people. Oh that man, I didn't even know there was a serious one in there. Thank you. Yeah, man. That was great. Uh, there's another serious one. Um, hold on. It's going to be something about Triton, isn't it? No. Uh, Rezo DJ says, <laughs> Hove is the fucking best. Don't care what oh, the haters gosh. say. I knew he was going to read this one. <laughs> okay. Triton lives in Hove's basement. Lego is cute and does all the work. Mana is new. <laughs> <laughs> Man is new. I, I mean, touche. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Um, and Hove has amazing eyebrows and I want them so bad. Is that Chibi Kim's? No. Yes. <laughs> absolutely that's all i got man thank y'all for for submitting all this that was fun and we appreciate and i will it. say for the record obviously hove and i don't live together but probably shouldn't take too many things that serious on the internet i guess oh wow wait, wait We're is admitting, admitting he is the teller of lies he is I'm admitting that i like to troll i mean if you want to blow it out to be a full-blown lie i guess so <laughs> I will not kid for three more shows. We'll see how fun this is. Okay. No okay. We'll see how fun our brand no is when I don't joke at all and troll. Well, it's let's okay. be completely honest. If I just went along with everything you said, it wouldn't be any fun. Well, no, true. That's yeah. true. Well, well, let's just not do that, though. And then you are the teller of lies, so fuck off. <laughs> well, he's attempting to be the truther of truths. <laughs> oh, the truther of truths. <laughs> Triton's a flat earther. That's what he is. <laughs> okay okay thank you everybody who submitted stuff we really appreciate it if you're listening on itunes this was a heck of an episode thank you for sticking <laughs> in it with us and um we just really appreciate you listening everybody who's listened to us for 50 episodes i cannot believe it we've had such a blast this journey with you, with you this year waiting for d2 it finally being here we're gonna go play it right after this man is gonna go to bed um hey. if if you enjoyed this please feel free to just leave a review on itunes and you know if not just stick around for next week we love to have you with us and you can find more about us at rezocast we'd love to hear from you um especially i'm sure so much is going to be going on next week with the raid trials is coming out so super pumped about that so much going on we didn't even talk about that that was in the twab for next week but we're pumped about it um, this has been Lego, aka Legole Flash. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube at Lego L E Flash. Mana, where can they find you? I am the Manigator. You can find me at Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all the social media is at the Manigator, the Dev Manigator, Manigator. I'm still not sure what goes to what. I should probably <laughs> fix that soon. He's not sure what in goes where. Oh, <laughs> where can they find you? Um Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, um, Ho76. Also, we forgot to talk about the TWAB. Yeah, I know. I think we'll we see. covered it, though, actually. Well, with We talked about the... We talked about thing. a lot of parts of it. Ho76 on all the platforms. Also, I didn't, unba- I didn't ban you, Triton. It was Wendler. And yeah, Triton, where can way. they find you? Not in my <laughs> chat. Because he's banned. <laughs> Not in Ho's chat. He's... <laughs> Not anymore. I guess I could tell you, but then, you know, Ho would say I'm lying. So you could find me in Ho's basement. Oh. I am his slave. We do snuggle. No, you can find me all the same places. Oh. Right? Please, please being PLZ. Nice. Uh, you can find more about Team Resolute at Team Resolute on Twitter and TeamResolute.com. 
And yeah, we're having a blast playing Destiny 2. So until next time, guys. GG. GG's. G's to the G's. Maybe Reese.